Greetings, friends. I welcome you as you join us in person or on Zoom on this 10th Sunday after Pentecost. We love seeing all of you here today. My name is Katie and I am your liturgist today. To our friends on Zoom, I would like to remind you to keep yourself muted especially when we are singing the hymns, and only to unmute yourself when you do the response. Um, if you are unmuted, please make sure your room is quiet. Please continue to lift up in prayer for Silver, the director of YCVM, our mission partner. Um, continued healing love, peace and strength as he recovers from his injuries and financial support to help his family navigate during this time. Uh, there is a donation box on the big table in the social hall. Um, donations will be collected by the end of July, um, so this month. And you can also send your donations to CCUMC by making a check out to CCUNC and by writing silver YCVM in the memo portion of your check. Continued prayers for the travel mercies for brother Ben Wong, who is currently on a cross country bike ride with the Fuller Center for Housing. He is currently building or renovating houses along the road from Seattle to DC on no right days. We will have a special Sunday offering for Peace with Justice on August 11th. Our annual church cleanup and maintenance will be on August 17th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And please mark your calendars for August 18th for our annual church picnic and joint service at 10 a.m. at Crab Cove Beach in Alameda. We need RSVP for lunch counts, and it's $15 for adults and $5 for children from 5 to 12. Um, Sign-up sheet is available, and if you need to carpool. Mark your calendars for Hospitality Sunday, um, which is during Street Fest, August 24th. Now, I would like to invite you all to take in a few deep breaths. And as you are breathing in, breathe in the grace of God. And as you exhale, breathe out your praises to God. Please stand as you are able and join me in call to worship. And friends on Zoom, you may unmute yourself to join the response in the bold print. Children of God, you are welcome here. All of who you are, even your regrets and failings, is welcome here. To tell you the truth about who you are in relationship with God. Many of us find it easy to recognize our goodness and difficult to notice our sins. Well, the truth about who we are in relationship with God. Others of us live under a shrewd of guilt and shame, believing we can never be good enough to receive the fullness of God's love. We come to tell the truth about who we are in relation to God. However you enter this place, know this. You are loved, accepted, and called. May God's love draw us to honest confession. God's acceptance assures us of the work of grace in our lives. And God's call compels us to live in grace. We come to tell the truth about who we are in relationship with God who loves us, accepts us, and calls us. Amen. 
friends, please remain standing for our opening hymn. Opening hymn is the Spirit Song in the United Methodist Hymnal 347. Yes. the universe. It is your awesome love that brings us here. You awaken within us a loving response, which hungers and thirsts for your truth and beauty. As we worship you, please do not give us what the blessings we want, but the ones we most need. Satisfy us with the truth that we may need, though such truth might be most uncomfortable and confront us with your holy beauty that brings us healing. Help us seize the time we have to be your people. In Christ's name, we ta who taught us to pray, let us now pray the Lord's Prayer together in unison. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now I'd like to invite Auntie Donna for our scripture reading. morning comes from John chapter 6 verses 1 to 21. Let us now listen with our whole selves to what the Holy Spirit has to say to us. John 6 1 to 21. 
Jesus crossed Lake Galilee, which was also known as Lake Tiberias. A large crowd had seen him work miracles to heal the sick. And those people went with him. It was almost time for the Jewish festival of Passover. And Jesus went up on a mountain with his disciples and sat down. When Jesus saw the large crowd coming toward him, he asked Philip, where will we get enough food to feed all these people? He said this to test Philip since he already knew what he was going to do. Philip answered, don't you know that it would take almost a year's wages just to buy only a little bread for each of these people? Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the disciples. He spoke up and said, there is a boy here who has five small loaves of bread, barley bread, and two fish, but what good is that with all these people? The ground was covered with grass, and Jesus told his disciples to tell everyone to sit down. About 5,000 men were in the crowd. Jesus took the bread in his hands and gave thanks to God. Then he passed the bread to the people, and he did the same with the fish. Until everyone had plenty to eat, the people ate all they wanted. Until everyone had, whoa, <laughs> sorry. Until everyone had plenty to eat, the people ate all they wanted, and Jesus told his disciples to gather up the leftovers so that nothing would be wasted. The disciples gathered them up and filled 12 large baskets with what was left over from the five barley loaves. After the people had seen Jesus work this miracle, they began saying, this must be the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus realized that they would try to force him to be their king, so he went up on a mountain where he could be alone. That evening, Jesus' disciples went down to, to the lake. They got into a boat and started ac across for Capernaum. Later that evening, Jesus had still not come to them, and a strong wind was making the water rough. When the disciples had rowed for five or six kilometers, they saw Jesus walking on the water. He kept coming closer to the boat, and they were terrified. But he said, I am Jesus. Don't be afraid. The disciples wanted to take him into the boat, but suddenly the boat reached the shore where they were headed. This is the written word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us now welcome Pastor Yvonne to share our message. Good morning. Thank you so much for the wonderful reading of the scripture. And thank you, Katie, for our, being our online uh, liturgist for today. Okay. Get this going. Make sure I have my fan running so it doesn't feel like I'm showering in front of you. <laughs> All right. Again, good morning, church family. So wonderful to be here in front of you. All right, well, a doctor, a nurse, and a top executive of an HMO organization had passed away. So they were standing in line together at the pearly gates. St. Peter speaks to them and he asks each of them, what have they done with their lives? The doctor says, well, St. Peter, I have devoted my life to the sick, and the needy, and I've had a part in caring and for healing of thousands of people. St. Peter replies, that's great. Go ahead into heaven. Then St. Peter looks to the nurse and asks, and what about you? The nurse replied, I have supported the doctor and his patients my entire adult life. I have taken time to explain things to the patients and have helped them to also lead healthy lives. And then St. Peter replies, well, that's wonderful. Please proceed with the doctor. Then on to the HMO executive. St. Peter asks, and what about you, sir? 
The HMO executive says, I was the president of a very large health maintenance organization. I was responsible for the health care of millions of people all over the country. And St. Peter says, oh, okay. But wait, you can only stay two nights. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, it's a little touchy, but I just thought it was hilarious. <laughs> All right, folks, will you all please be in the attitude of prayer and please pray with me. Gracious and loving God, we gather today in your presence, seeking your wisdom, your guidance, as we reflect on the story of Jesus feeding the multitude open our hearts and minds and to the abundance of all that you provide. May we recognize your presence in our lives and be inspired to share your love with others. In your son's name we pray. Amen. So, beloved siblings in Christ. Let me just take this off because I feel like I have to lean in all the time. Today's scripture, as it was read, was about... Um, Jesus feeding all these people, 5,000 men. That's pretty miraculous. It's an event that um, where loaves of bread and fish were multiplied. It's about also recognizing about God's abundant presence in our lives then also the importance of inclusivity, inclusivity, sorry, inclusivity in our community. Sorry about being tongue-tied this morning. The story begins with Jesus crossing to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And a large crowd is following him because they saw the signs that he was performing on the sick. Jesus goes up to a mountain, sits with his disciples, and this was before the celebration of the Passover. It's a festival for people who are Jewish. And when Jesus is looking up, he sees a large crowd that's coming towards him. And he asks Philip, where are we to buy bread for all these people who are gathered here? They are hungry. And Jesus asked Philip this to test him because Jesus already knew what he was going to do. But Jesus loves to test us to make sure we're paying attention. And so Philip responds, as I probably would myself too, with some doubts, like, hey, Jesus, do the math. I mean, there's 5,000 men. It'll take six months' wages, and it's not, they, they wouldn't even be fully fed with the six months' wages of food that we buy for them. They'd only get a little bit. And then Andrew inserts himself, who is also the brother of Simon Peter, and he points out, well, there is this little boy who is offering five loaves of bread and two fish to share with all of us. But then he questions it, like how is this gonna be enough for everybody? But he wanted to make sure that, hey, Jesus knew that there was somebody offering. So here, we also pause to recognize an important detail that is often overlooked. Women and children were not counted in that 5,000. And it was 5,000 men that was only mentioned. This means that the actual number that was fed was likely much higher. And it often reminds how often in society how they overlook the contributions and the presence of women and children. Yet, 
It's a boy's offering that Jesus uses to perform this miracle. This inclusion shows us that everyone, regardless of age, gender, has a vital role in God's work. And remember, it is this young child, this innocent child, who had only five loaves of bread and two fish, all this child had, that was willing to share with everyone, probably had an idea it wasn't gonna feed any, everyone, but at least he was willing to share. And if you recognize the innocence of this boy, this is why Jesus says, let the children come to me because the kingdom of God belongs to them because he gave all he had to try to feed, to, to share the abundance that he had. So Jesus takes the loaves of bread, gives thanks, and distrib distributes them to everyone who are seated as much as they wanted. How amazing is that? As much as they wanted. And you only saw that Jesus had five loaves of bread, if you were present there. And as he does this, Jesus also takes the fish and give thanks to God as well and distributes them. When they're all satisfied, I love this part of the Bible, Jesus tells his disciples to gather up all the fragments of bread and fish, all that is left over so that nothing may be lost that nothing goes to waste. They collect 12 basketfuls full of fragments of the five loaves of bread and the two fish, showing the abundance of God's provision. And in this miracle, we see God's abundance presence and provision for all, not just for the 5,000 men that were present, but for all, for all the women and the children that were there. It's a powerful reminder that God's love and grace are not limited, but are overflowing. In our United Methodist tradition, we emphasize the inclusivity and the radical hospitality of God's kingdom. Everyone is welcome at God's table. No matter who you are, where you come from, how you got here, no matter how far you are on your faith journey, there is always a seat for you at the table. And also remember this, everyone has something valuable to contribute to this table. And as I shared a personal testimony before with you, regarding how I came to be a pastor. I'm gonna share it with you again. So when I first discerned my call, not everyone in my life understood or supported my decision. My own mother, who I love, um, coming from a tradition that did not support female pastors, she struggled initially with my calling. It took two years into my ministry for her to fully recognize and affirm God's call for me to serve. So this journey has taught me that God's call transcends human boundaries and experiences and also expectations. And that each of us has a unique and important role in God's work. So after this miraculous feeding, the scene shifts dramatically. Jesus receives that the crowd intends to come and to make him king by force. So he withdraws to the mountain by himself. As evening falls, the disciples go down to the sea they get into the boat, and they start across the sea to Capernaum. It becomes dark, and Jesus has not joined them yet. The sea becomes rough. 
The winds are strong, rocking the boat back and forth. And when they have rowed about three or four miles, they see that Jesus is walking on the sea and coming near the boat. They are terrified. Honestly, I would be too. But Jesus says to them, it is I to not be afraid. And they want to take him onto the boat. But the boat immediately reaches the shore that they are heading towards. So this theophany, this divine revelation of Jesus walking on the sea reminds us of God's power and presence even in the midst of chaos and fear, much like they were experiencing on the boat. It's a continuation of the theme of God's abundance presence, now manifest not only into feeding of the multitude, but also into calming the storm and the assurance that Jesus' presence with his disciples. As we reflect on these stories, we are called to examine our own lives and communities. Are we recognizing and valuing everyone's contributions, especially those whom often society overlooks? Are we trusting in God's abundant provision and presence in our times of need and fear? Are we trusting, most importantly, sorry, and perhaps most importantly, are we sharing that abundance assurance with others? Will you all please pray with me? Loving and generous God, we thank you for the abundance uh, that you provide in our lives. Help us to recognize your presence and to share your love with everyone that we encounter. May we be instruments of your grace and your peace, welcoming all to your table. Guide us in our journey of faith. Empower us to live out your inclusive and radical hospitality. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Um, so we will be doing our breakout um, groups. And you are invited to share your thoughts with your group on the guided questions um, that are on the screen. Uh, so number one, when are we faced <coughs> excuse me, with the reality of the hunger of those around us? And do we first go to our scarcity, what we don't have, or how much it's going to cost us? Mm, second question, <coughs> are we becoming the kind of community that, sorry, <coughs> that acknowledges receives and activates the gifts and offerings of our children and youth. So, um, I'm, so we could break out into our groups in the online and in your pews. Uh, you are invited, you're now invited to share joys and concerns for yourself your community and God's world so that we may lift them up in common prayer. When you share, um, for those on Zoom, you can unmute yourself. And after we have shared um, or named our joys and concerns, let us respond um, in healing. Oh. <clears throat> so anyone on Zoom? Oh, um, Gual, I think you're muted. Okay, here we go. Uh, prayer for 
Ben and Ari. Ari just flew into D.C. yesterday, uh, day before yesterday. So uh, that's where the end of the bright bike ride ends in Washington, D.C. So uh, she's there at the church right now, and that's where they're staying. Uh, they provide somehow some sort of a sleeping area in the church. So uh, I hope that uh, all is well. Uh, this last leg of the, his bike ride was a lot of ups and down, ups and down. So it's not an easy ride. Basically. And also, uh, I pray that uh, I'm seeing the doctor more often now, uh, my pulmonologist and uh, with the COPD, it, it's they're trying to find the right drug to treat it. So there's no cure, uh, but it's all from secondhand smoke. So hopefully that everybody that uh, hangs around people that smoke, that, uh, try to avoid as much as possible. Okay. Keep going. That's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah. Well, we we saw we had a gathering of our uh, siblings and cousins and nieces, what have you, yesterday, and it was uh, we were we all feel blessed that we still have each other to commune with and um, just pray for those that couldn't make it and pray for everyone to continue to be in good health. Anybody else online? Right. I saw on Friday, the open sun, Olympic Games on Friday. I was watching the TV last night. I was watching the TV open sun on the big boat at the tower. The big of this tower is in Paris. You see a Paris on the end of fire. You see the fire on the top. Open some on the beginning. The little games has a basketball Saturday. Saturday, spring, four, and then Sunday, men basketball, 110. A big one to full medal. You know, great, great little game. This Saturday and Sunday began weekend all day long. And then prime time tonight, we'll see the competition, all nation. And then thank you and God bless you next. That's all. No. Thank you. Anybody else have prayer requests? I want to lift up Peggy. Um, as you know, she has this respiratory um, problem and it's lingering just too long. So I pray for God's healing for her lungs that she can rest at night because it's really uncomfortable to be coughing and having all these um, episodes. And she's tried all these medicines and they all, you know, they do help a little, but it's not quite what she needs. So we pray, Lord, that you would heal her. And I pray for Lewis because he shared with me that he kind of had a rough week. And we pray that he would see God in any situation that he faces and know that God is in charge and he's all powerful. Right, Lewis? Yes. And pray that you will feel that and know it and be able to fight all the opposition he has in wherever he comes. <coughs> and I continue to lift up Wadi Fokin and Palestine, Gaza. You know, the war keeps going. I mean, it's in the news and, it, and it's not stopping. And we pray that our government would do the right things in support of a ceasefire. That's what we all want. And we pray that Netanyahu would really uh, work it out with the Hamas and have a peace 
prevailing and that all will be safe on both sides. We know that they both feel challenged and threatened, so pray that, they will, that God will overcome and bring peace to the Middle East. And pray for Wadi Fokin because they face a lot of daily fear. They have no jobs. They cannot leave the village. We, I attended a Zoom with Atta yesterday, and he showed us the blockage of their main road. They can't leave freely. And the people um, have this grocery store that they've started, and I pray that that will be successful. And it's really empowering to them because it's something that they're working together to help each other and to have hope in a future, jobs and what can they do? I mean, I mean, they know that life is awful there, but this is something that's positive, and it's a sign of solidarity, and I pray that that will be successful and that we can all support them. Thank you, God. <laughs> I want to give grace and thanks to God because we're so blessed with Tony, how Tony just stepped up to uh, help sing with Pastor, so thank you, Tony. Um, also, uh, when I came in, Tony shared with me about the uh, Olympics. So I too, I watched the Olympics, and 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 I just feel I don't proud, but also it's just amazing to see all these different countries and they come together, and it was so exciting to see a del delegates from Ukraine and delegates from Palestine also in the Olympics and also how they said Russia was banned from participating. So, um, but we also want to uh, keep in our prayers um, Pastor Ivana's husband and father-in-law who are in Cambodia, make sure that they are kept safe. And uh, I know Rodney's out of the country right now, so keep him safe oh, coming home tonight. So traveling mercies for Rodney. And I think that's all. <laughs> Would anybody have prayers or praises to lift up? Well, I'll be included. Um, I, you know, um, continued prayers for people that are traveling, travel mercies for them. It's, it can be difficult with everything that's going on and also um, prayer praise. I actually had the opportunity with my dad to watch the opening of the Olympics and it was such a beautiful um, opening. Um, I think it was like 3.30 in the morning. My dad woke me up. And so we got to watch that. And I got to spend time with my dad. It's, we really don't, we have a lot of differences. So it's like this is one of the few things where we got to bond with each other. So I give thanks to God for that. Thank you. Um, let us now respond in singing our, uh, Oh Lord, hear our prayers. We are grateful for the gifts that we receive in our lives. We invite you to participate in this opportunity of generosity to continue the mission of God's love to the world. We are grateful and thankful. Please come forward to place your gifts on the plate at the front of the pews and use the side aisles to get back to your seat.
For those on Zoom, I invite you to lift your hands up as a sign to offer your gifts. And let us pray. Loving God, in this sacred moment of offering, we come before you with humble hearts, recognizing your unwavering mercy and boundless compassion. As we present our gifts, may we also lay bare our shortcomings and seek your forgiveness and guidance. Grant us the courage to confront our humanity and the strength to strive for righteousness in all our endeavors. Amen. Friends, let us now sing our closing hymn, Take Our Bread. We stand as you are able, whether in body or in spirit. Let us now receive our um, benediction. <clears throat> All right, friends, will you please remain standing, whether in body or spirit, and receive the benediction. But before we close, I want to leave this question for you to ponder. How can we make a change in our effort to include and value everyone in our community? Recognizing that each person, regardless of their age, their gender, or their status, has something valuable to offer. Let us not be comfortable with the status quo, but rather be moved to act, knowing that God's abundant love is meant to be shared with all. So go forth, beloved community, in the knowledge of God's abundant love and presence. Share the love with all you meet. And may the peace of Christ go with you, the love of God surround you all, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit keep you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.